counters are everywhere. You will have to deal with designs with some kind of counter if you are working on any reasonably big design. And if you are a formal verification engineer, counters will make sure that your life is not easy. <laughs> and there are some tips to deal with the counters. Let's discuss them in the session today. Let's say you built an alarm clock and verified that the hour, minute and second needles work as expected. Now you want to implement the alarm feature. During the implementation, you need to check multiple times if you actually implemented the alarm functionality correctly or not. Let's say the time now is 2 p.m. You have set the alarm clock for 3 p.m. Would you wait for one hour for the clock to reach 3 p.m. and sound the alarm? No, that would take a very long time to debug your alarm functionality and implement it correctly. Instead, you can set the time to 2.59 p.m. and then wait for just one minute for the alarm to trigger. That would save a lot of your debug time. In RTL designs, we have so many such cases where counter, which is analogous to the timer we just discussed previously, needs to reach a particular value to trigger a certain functionality of the design. If uh, the out of reset value of that counter is zero, and say the value at which the functionality that you're interested in verifying gets triggered at 1023, every single counter counter example that we get will have at least 1023 clock cycles because the counter will have to get out of reset and count from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. and to 1023, then your check will be triggered. So, so, so the essentially the tool will have to unnecessarily wait for 0 to 1022 where nothing interesting happens as far as the check is concerned. What if we could reset our counter to 1023 out of reset in just one clock? Same way we did while verifying the alarm clock, alarm functionality. So the length of the counter example will get reduced from 1022 clocks, 1023 clocks to one clock or two cycles. So that would be amazing. Counter abstraction can help you do that. Let's dive into the counter abstraction details in a bit. So far, we have covered all the basic complexity reduction techniques and one intermediate, intermediate complexity reduction techniques, which is called case splitting, which was in the last video. Today, we are going to discuss counter abstractions. So if you haven't watched all the previous videos, I would really recommend uh, going back to my YouTube channel and watch all of them. But even if you are not watched, you can still continue watching this video. So what is counter abstraction? It is simply a way of replacing a long counter with a smaller model that is sufficient for the functionality under verification. This leads to shorter counter examples that obviously leads to catching bugs faster. How can you do counter abstraction? Cut point the counter signal and drive it using uh, the abstract counter value from your abstraction. When I say your abstraction, it can be a module or it can be a piece of code which you are which you are going to write, which I will show you in the next slide. Uh, so everything is so everything is good. Um, so is there any problem with doing counter abstraction? Yes. So there is a common mistake that people make while doing counter abstraction. It's it's very easy to miss uh, a particular counter value, which is important for the design functionality or certain design functionality. And if you overlook that and then don't consider that counter value. What will happen is all your checks will pass and you might sign off the design saying that there is no bug, but whereas you have kind of masked or not considered that particular case at all, and you will end up missing a bug. Let me tell you how you can implement counter abstraction. To do this, we need to create a finite state machine with two states. Uh, here I have state start and state one, but really the number of states depends on the number of values that you want the abstracted counter to take. Here I'm ensuring that the abstraction takes the values of count one and max count, which are 1023 and 2047 respectively. Out of reset, the state will go to start. And then once it is in a start state, we have an assumption saying that don't skip count to one. So this will ensure that while the FSM abstraction FSM is in the state start, it should, uh, it will never miss the value count one. It can take any values from 0 to 1023, which is count one, but it cannot skip count one. 
since the uh, since the formal verification tools usually give the shortest possible counter examples the counter value has an option to jump directly to the value of 1023 which is technically what we want so then once it reaches count one it can go to state one and in state one in the using the same logic we can take directly jump to the value of 2047 based on this assumption which simply says that once it is in state one it shouldn't take it shouldn't skip the value of counter max which is 2047 so this is these two assumptions are sufficient to implement a very simple counter abstraction but you need to implement it and see if you're missing some case which you didn't want to miss in the abstraction this is to give you a general idea so in a nutshell these two assumptions along with this abstraction make sure that you have a simple counter which can toggle between start and state and then it can take uh, values any combination of values but not excluding 1023 and 2047 which are the interesting values for the property that you're verifying so how will the abstraction affect the counter values usually initially when you did not have any abstraction you were forced to wait for the counter to reach from zero all the way to 2023 for your check trigger and then you will be checking whether a particular property that you're verifying is passing or failing but with the abstraction we have values 1023 jumping directly to 2047 out of 2023 and 2047 that's it and these are the fsm states corresponding to these values that we discussed uh, so do you see any big counters in your designs why not abstract them and see how much speed you are getting in proving the properties or getting to interesting counter examples i hope you get counter examples more than proofs and find some interesting bugs i'm really excited to know how it went let me know thanks a lot again for watching make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss an update on formal stay tuned for the next video where we'll cover another interesting fun formal verification topic see you next time bye